morning and welcome to an all-new Eye of the Tiger. I'm Gigi Pagel. And I'm Joseph McIntyre. Not all heroes wear capes. Some wear sunglasses and a walkie-talkie. We go to Connor Baker with more. Thanks, Gigi. Last Friday, Hall Monitor and hero Steve Golba saved freshman Evan Redding from choking. So I was over in the 900s helping out a student that was testing the uh, toilets over there for some kind of bacteria or something. And I got a call that a student needed out of the student lot. So I was coming around the back side of the um, auxiliary gym and I noticed the student was visibly like, help me, I can't breathe, he was choking. So I set my water bottle down and I instantly went into uh, what I knew what to do and just turned him around and applied the Heimlich maneuver on him. Uh, on about the fourth squeeze, the stuff came out. Before Steve was able to get there to help, Redding's friends attempted to help him. They were unsuccessful in their attempts, but were able to get Steve's attention in time. Oh yeah, man, his friends, uh, before I got there, he was choking for a good solid minute. Yeah, his friends were hitting him on the back. He was trying to pour water down his throat and nothing. And even his friend tried picking him up and doing the Heimlich maneuver and just couldn't get enough pressure on it. Principal Nicholas Richter heard about Steve's heroic actions and believes everyone should learn and refresh themselves on these life-saving techniques. Absolutely, CPR, first aid, um, that's part of that training that we would, uh, that we all have to go through as teachers. Um, we do refreshers every now and then. I would encourage everyone to go through that as frequently as necessary to stay up on it because we can see just that little bit of training or knowledge really made a huge impact, at least for, for one particular student. Luckily, Steve had recently watched a video teaching how to do it, so he was able to save someone in need. Yeah, it was crazy, and he turned around and instantly gave me a big hug, and it was, it was pretty magical, man. It was awesome that I was able to save his life like that. <laughs> Redding is very grateful that Steve was there and was able to help save his life. Now we go back to news. He's proving once again he's the hall monitor we need, but not the one we deserve. And now we go to Joseph Bianchini with sports. Thanks guys. March Madness is back with the brackets being revealed on Sunday. I've got EOTSN's official bracket and teams to look out for alongside an exciting Roseville baseball win in this week's game schedule. Let's go. Good morning and welcome to Tuesday's edition of EOTSN. I'm Joseph Bianchini. On Friday, Roseville's baseball team hosted possibly the best team in the area. The Rockland Thunder came in and pitched their Stanford commit, but it didn't matter. David Santino pitched eight innings and 102 pitches, only giving up three runs. Parker Hellickson hit a two-run bomb. Just like last week's game against Heritage, the game went into extras. Tied in the bottom of the eighth inning, Ethan Lulu walked up to the plate and sent Roseville to a dub. Yeah, so David Sateno pitched the game of his life, went eight innings, only allowed three runs. Uh, Parker Hellickson with the two-run homer in like the fifth, gave us a lot of momentum. We were facing a great pitcher, couldn't really hit him all day, but we had our opportunities. And then the eighth, uh, he gave me a pitch to hit, I didn't miss it, and uh, hit a walk-off. Okay, let's switch gears. It's that time of year again, buzzer beaters, Cinderella's, posters, it's March Madness time, baby. Yesterday, the Iowa Tiger Sports Department and other college basketball fans in the program sat down and voted on every single game in this year's tournament. There was a fair amount of arguing, but ultimately, this is the bracket we agreed upon. It's a relatively safe bracket with three of our final four teams being one seeds. What really stands out, though, is our five seed, Iowa, taking the Midwest. Iowa is hot coming off of a Big Ten championship, and let me tell you, watch out for number 15, Keegan Murray. The dude is a bucket. Other notable sleepers are 11 seed Virginia Tech in the East and 4 seed UCLA also coming out of the East. So, with that being said, here are EOTSN's official teams to look out for during this year's March Madness. The top dogs are Gonzaga and Arizona. Both are teams with length and have bucket getters everywhere. Don't overthink your pick when you're picking a matchup with one of these two teams in it. I can't really recall a year with more sleepers than this year. I already went over Iowa. UConn is just a basketball school that is well coached and has great depth. USC lost Evan Mobley but still have Isaiah Mobley who's really solid and of course Boogie Ellis, their guard. 
and Texas Tech is always a team that gets overlooked but still makes noise. Now who's overrated? Auburn. Javari Smith is great, but they have too many losses to teams that they really should have beaten. We have Baylor going to the Final Four, but do not be surprised if they're the first one seed to get dropped in the weakest section of the bracket. And of course, Wisconsin is nothing special and will likely lose in the Sweet 16 or potentially earlier. And finally, the most potential to make a Cinderella run is Virginia Tech. They are coming off of an ACC championship run and have so much momentum. Make sure you tag EOT Sports on Twitter with your brackets and good luck to all for this March Madness season. And finally, looping back to Roseville Sports, let's take a look at this midterm week's game schedule. Today, baseball go to Granite Bay. The softball team take on Vista Del Lago. Boys volleyball are in Rockland and tennis go to Yuba City while golf hosts River Valley. Tomorrow, baseball are on the road at Folsom. Track have a meet at Antelope. Boys lacrosse go to Davis while girls lacrosse are home against Davis and swim have a meet versus Wood Creek and Endercombe. Thursday is a light day with midterms. You've got boys tennis on the road at Bella Vista and golf have a home match versus Yuba City. Friday baseball go on the road to take on Whitney. Boys lacrosse are home versus Jesuit and girls lacrosse take on Jesuit on the road at Mather Sports Complex. And finally, boys volleyball have the Placer Tourney at Delaro High School on Saturday. And that's all on your home for Roswell High School Sports, Top Plays, Breakdowns, and more. I, the Tiger Sports Network, UTSN. And now we go over to entertainment. Thanks, Joseph. Last Friday, Lil Durk dropped the Hood Classic. His album 7220 was a well-balanced project that really shows Durk's versatility as an artist. The way all the songs flow into one another makes for a very interesting and pleasing experience. Barely relying on features, Durk only has four guest appearances on the 17th song album. The most surprising feature had to have been Morgan Wallen on the song Broadway Girls. Me personally, I never thought I would ever listen to an actual country artist over a trap instrumental and actually enjoy it. Dirk's performance on this track is nothing to scoff at. He absolutely rode the acoustic trap beat and showed the industry he can do whatever he wants while still sounding good. With a passionate appearance from Summer Walker on the track Difference Is, Dirk really shows he knows how to tap into his R&B bag. Dirk, Rio, and Future came together to drop a hot boy anthem for the upcoming spring break with the track Petty 2. Future's verse had me on my feet and ready to act a fool. Dirk really showed the game with this one, and he showed that he can drop an album that evokes emotion in one minute, then make you want to go out and party the next song, all without sounding unbefitting of the project. This album definitely solidifies the little Dirk's spot as a future Rap Hall of Famer. And on this week's rap, uh, Underground Radar release, we have September Rich's album BNL. This project was only really wanted by a small niche of rap fans, but every song on there definitely made me even more of a fan. This is a definite recommendation with a solid 7.5 out of 10. And now we go back to news. Thanks, Nathan. Midterms are this Thursday and Friday. Here's a look at the schedule. The first period starts at 7.40 and ends at 9.44 with a 60 minute break after. Second period is from 10.06 to 12.10. Friday schedule is the same for third and fourth periods. Due to finals and the day off for students next Tuesday, Eye the Tiger's next show will be on March 25th. And that's it for us today on Eye the Tiger. And remember, we're always on at eyeofthetigernews.com. See you next time.